All right, welcome, everyone, to today's Google SEO Office Hours Hangout. It's not hang Hangout anymore. I guess the Hangout part we have to drop at some point. But Google SEO Office Hours, I guess. Um, I'm John Mueller. I'm a search advocate here at Google in Switzerland. And part of what we do are these hang out um, office hours, I guess. Uh, so awkward with the names. They keep changing. Uh, but anyway, a bunch of questions were submitted already on YouTube, which, which is fantastic. And uh, it's good to see a bunch of you here as well. Uh, if any of you would like to get started with the first question, you're welcome to jump in. Hi, John. Hi. Can, can I start? Sure. OK. Uh, first of all, thanks, because the favicon problems, I, I don't know if you remember from uh, a couple of months ago, has been fixed finally. So thanks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now it appears. <laughs> OK. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the question. If I look at the statistics of the Google Search Console in the past six months, uh, I see that uh, the number of impressions has uh, nearly doubled. So in, in six months, uh, uh, Google uh, shows uh, twice uh, the time uh, uh, you know, on the Search Console to, the, to, to people in the internet. So I can say, OK, this, this is very good, because maybe Google is, uh, is liking the site. No? But at the same time, the, the average position went down, uh, significantly down. And so the overall uh, number of clicks uh, is the same. <laughs> so how can I interpret this? I mean, what, what is to be uh, changed or to, to improve the situation? Because these are two different signals. No? One is positive, and the other is, uh, is negative. Yeah. So with, with any kind of changes that you see in the performance report, my recommendation is always to try to drill down and find some examples of, of this change in, in a way that is very visible. Uh, so for example, you could look in to see if there are specific pages that, that have changed in like the ranking or in the number of impressions, uh, or if there are specific queries where you see this change. So one, one thing that might be happening is that maybe just more people are searching. Uh, it might also be happening that you're showing for slightly different queries than before, uh, where it's like there may be more, more impressions for those queries, but you're not quite in that competitive range yet. Uh, so all of these things can help you to figure out a little bit better wh where your site is positioned at the moment and what you might be able to do to improve there. So for example, if you're being shown for uh, more competitive queries, more things that pe more people are searching for, then that could be a sign that it's like Google has recognized that you're, you're relevant for those kind of queries. And now it's up to you to really improve the, the quality of your website overall so that Google says, well, this is actually a good result for this query. Um, and that's something that ultimately you, you have to figure out with, with your business goals in mind and think about. Like, is, is this the query that I think my site should be ranking for? Or maybe is Google showing it for the wrong query? And if so, how can I help Google understand my, my content a little bit better? Uh, so it's not just like blindly focusing on the number of impressions and the number of clicks and the number of uh, the rankings that you have there, but rather trying to figure out how, how can you position your business in a way that makes sense for your business, uh, for your business goals, and kind of brings it into the right place for users. OK. Thank you very much. It's, and it's sometimes really tricky with, with yeah. these kind of things, because um, also because of uh, things like internationalization. Uh, so that's something that we, we sometimes see with, with our own content. Um, for example, I don't know, the, the Webmaster Central blog in Canada sometimes ranks for the word Google. And you can imagine uh, then the number of impressions from Canada is suddenly really high, uh, but the number of clicks is really low, because normal people, when they search for Google, they don't want to go to the webmaster blog. Uh, so it's, it's something where sometimes you can do something to control it, and sometimes it's just, I don't know, the algorithms being a little bit weird. OK. 
Thank you. Sure. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. All right. Any other questions before we jump into the submitted ones? Um, Sergio, I think you're trying to say something, but I can't hear anything. Nope. He did post a question in the chat, though. Oh, in the chat. OK. Um, all right. Uh, let me see. Ooh, OK, long question. Uh, one of my client sites has been around for more than five years and held good rankings for keywords related to hypnosis, self-help, binaural waves, and subliminal messages. As a form of therapy, we've noticed over time, especially after the medical and BERT updates, that these rankings dropped to the second and third page of results. Oh, man, I see you're struggling with the microphone. But I, I'll just read for the moment, and it's like, if, if you get online, no, no problem. Uh, the content has always been great uh, in comparison to the pages that now rank on page one. Um, I can see that the first five positions for many keywords have been awarded to medical and psychologically authoritative sites, which is great. But position five to 10, there are many low quality sites in comparison. And then there's some examples there. I think you also submitted this as a question. Let me see if I can find your question. Uh, I do see that the site is thriving in other areas. Uh, and other pages that we consider more supplementary content, while the main content seems to be plummeting. My suspicion is that Google thinks the site and its authors' areas of expertise are not relevant enough to be trusted uh, to award better rankings. Could that be the case? Uh, if so, how could we recover from it? Um, so it's it's definitely possible that uh, this this is the kind of thing that that is happening here, especially when it comes to um, I think medical kind of queries, it is something where our algorithms try to be a little bit more, um, I don't know, more critical with regards to, to the site and uh, the information that, that we find there. Uh, so that's something where I would try to find a way. Oh, I can hear something from you. Yeah, I think I fixed it. OK, cool. OK, cool, cool. Yeah, I, I just would like to add, I didn't want to really interrupt you, but I really I wanted to add, I mean, I've been looking at all the queries, and it, it, it seems like the pattern um, indicates that you know the specialized sites like the psychology and, and all this um, traditional, uh, would say, you know, medical institutions would, would dominate those rankings, um, top five positions, but then, but then let's say that the alternative sort of ways of treating those mental illnesses are, are falling a bit after that, you know, between five and 10 sometimes. So my question really is, um, is, it, is it worth it to keep and try and going after those queries? Or is it something that maybe it's never going to happen? And maybe we should just do something else? I, I I would never say that it's never going to change um, because the the web is very dynamic and these things do change. Uh, but I I think just leaving it as it is and hoping that it magically changes on its own I I think that's generally a bad strategy. Uh, so I I kind of on, on the one hand I I think kind of shifting the focus a little bit and trying to find queries where it makes more sense to show these sites that might be an option the other idea might be really to uh, find a way to to really highlight why your site is really the one that uh, should be shown for some of these queries and I, I realize that's kind of tricky in the sense that my usual advice is to say, well, you should make sure that your site should be ranked number one by far. And it sounds like in your position, you're saying, well, the number one rankings are kind of OK. And we agree with those. We would just like to be kind of on the first page as well. And I think that's, that's kind of a, a tricky balance. So one thing I, I would recommend, though, is to look at what some of the, the other people around uh, in the SEO area around EAT have been writing about. They, there are lots of really good 
I think case studies are examples of sites that worked hard to, to improve their expertise, authority, and trust uh, in, in terms of how they present their content and in terms of how, how they create the content, how they have things like author profiles, all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, that might be something where, where you could look into. So I, I don't know all of the names offhand. And I feel if I mention the, some of them, then the other ones that I forget will be upset. Uh, but th there's some really good, good SEOs that, that have been working in this area, have been working with medical sites on this topic. And uh, I, I would try to search out their content and look at some of those examples. I, do, I can't guarantee that if you improve your site in that regard, that suddenly our algorithms will say, oh, this is a really fantastic site. Uh, but it sounds like you're, you're touching on the medical area there. And it definitely makes sense, at least for users, to make sure that you have all of those signals as well, that you're really saying, well, this is not something that, I don't know, some kid dreamt up in his basement, but rather we spent a long time researching this. And here's like the research, and here are the people behind it, and kind of presenting it in a way that is trustworthy for users as well. And then sometimes we can pick that up for search as, as well. Thank you. Thank you, John. Sure. OK. Um, hey, John. Hi. Uh, question? Hi. Go for it. Sure. Okay. Uh, OK, my question is regarding uh, mobile first indexing and ranking. So uh, for example, there is some website that is on mobile first indexing. So from Google's point of view, I think Google will uh, uh, what, what say? Google will use uh, mobile, uh, mobile versions content and ranking signals for rankings uh, on desktop and mobile both. Is that right? Yes. Yes. OK, uh, uh, now the second question is, if a website is on mobile first indexing, but their uh, majority of traffic is coming from desktop, because their product is a, is a desktop only product. It's a software application that runs on desktop only. So they, their uh, majority of traffic is coming from desktop. So in that case, uh, will Google consider their desktop uh, content for rankings, or it will still consider their mobile uh, version for rankings? It's, it would only use the mobile version for ranking. So when we shift to mobile-first indexing, or if we've already shifted that site to mobile-first indexing, then yeah. we will only use the, the mobile version for indexing and for ranking. So in, in a case like that, uh, one thing you can do is if, if it's really primarily a desktop site, like, for example, if it's a, a a software company that only sells desktop software, then you can just make a desktop site and don't have kind of a simplified mobile version for that. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter where the traffic is coming from or what type of users are searching for the site. If it's in mobile-first indexing, we only use the mobile version uh, for indexing. Sure. Thank you. That's for the, that's for the confusion, basically, because most of the traffic is on desktop, so you, you were confused if Google is considering desktop signals or not. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Sure. Uh, John, a quick follow-up on that. Um, I know we talked last time about a, a classified site uh, I'm working with and the, the fact they're still on desktop. And one of the reasons it wasn't migrated yet was because uh, differences in content for pages with very high impressions. Uh, so I checked a bit into that. And I noticed pages with the highest impressions are usually kind of like category pages for classified ads. Uh, and those change very fast. I mean, there are a lot of, it's one of the biggest classified ads in, in Romania. So the, the pages themselves uh, change a lot in a very short amount of time. So I was wondering when Google checks whether the desktop version is similar to the mobile versions in terms of content, is there any delay? Does it check it at this exact same time? Or is there some time passing between the, uh, the individual tests? Um, I mean, there's always a delay because like, you can't really do everything at exactly the same sure. time. Um, but I, in, in general, we should be able to deal with that. So it, like on news sites, we, we kind of have the same problem, that there are always new, new news yep. articles. And my, my understanding is we should be able to deal with that. It, what, what I have seen on 
not on classified sites in particular, but sometimes on e-commerce sites, is when you look at uh, category pages, sometimes the mobile category page has a lower number of articles on it. Uh, so you might have, on, on desktop, you have kind of like this, this matrix of, of content where you have, I don't know, maybe 50 items on, on the desktop category page. And on mobile, you just have 10 because you have this one row or one, one column of content. Uh, so that's something where we, we could kind of pick that up on. And I think we have that in, in the last blog post on mobile first indexing as well. We kind of touched on that subject. Um, I think, in, in general, in a, in a case like this, I wouldn't necessarily worry about it if you're sure that kind of like this is how we want to present it. And if we index the mobile version, it's like we have all of the content. It's just a different number of items. And it's like it's all the same. Yep. Then in, in a case like that, I, like, I, I would just leave it be. It's not that you're going to rank better or higher with mobile first indexing. At some yep. point, we'll just shift the site over and say, oh, we've waited long enough. And if you're happy with the mobile content and the desktop content, then it's like, well, nothing will change, right? So that should be fine. Right. Uh, makes sense. In this particular case, the number of um, individual listings is the same. But again, the, the due to the freshness of the new ads, uh, the, con the actual content changes like in minutes. So if there's a like if we're talking about minutes in terms of delay, it's already different content, especially for those very high impression categories. Yeah, yeah. I, I could I imagine that maybe that throws us off. Yeah, that, that as you mentioned, it doesn't really matter anyway because whether it's on desktop or when you shift on mobile, it's just going to be the same content. I mean, new content anyway. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's that's an interesting one though. It's, I mean, it's I, I think with mobile first indexing, it's always kind of a, a case of if your site is not shifted over, do you have a problem or not? And if as long as you can determine that actually like our our site is okay and it's just Google that is a bit confused, then like I I would just leave it be and let it let it kind of take its time. Right. I mean, if it was an internal linking problem, that would actually be more um, um, of a concern because yeah. then ranking signals might not be transferred correctly and so forth. But in, in this case, it, it's it's not the case. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Cool. Hey, John. Uh, Hi. Quick, quick question. So I've been working with a news media publisher, and they did a recently in early August. They did a redesign and. After two to three weeks, their traffic uh, dropped by almost 40%. So they are quite big in terms of, of traffic and in terms of keyword rankings and authority. And the only thing that changed during this, let's call it light redesign, was some fonts and uh, not a lot on, in terms of uh, layout changes. So one thing, and we, we've tried different things to kind of investigate why this drop happened, worked on page speed issues that were there before, but maybe could have been the reason. We knew that some internal linking might have changed, but that doesn't uh, totally explain why that <clears throat> the drop happened sidewide, not on just some specific articles and other things. But one thing that we are suspecting that might be the case is a page layout penalty. So here's what happened. In when the article starts, there is a video there. And sometimes in that video, an ad plays. Not all the times, but in some cases. We are just, when we are uh, auditing the pages through uh, Lighthouse, in some cases, it shows that there is no ads. In some cases, there is. So we are suspecting that that is causing the Google to see that there are a lot of, like there is this uh, ad on mobile that's a bold default that is considerably uh, taking space and uh, and and that was before the redesign at the same place. But our suspect is that because of the light redesign, Google uh, totally reevaluated the whole site, and now is thinking that this shouldn't be there and uh, it's not a bad user experience for the 
users and so it's it's a bad user experience and for that reason we are suspecting that this might be the reason for the drop because we are struggling to find one reason to explain a sidewide traffic drop of about 40%. Yeah. Um I I don't think a redesign would trigger a reevaluation in terms of kind of understanding the page layout. So that seems like something that that would be unlikely. Um, it's it's hard to say with with what you're saying about the, the redesign. It sounds like that wouldn't be playing a role with kind of how we we rank things there. Um, but so sometimes there there's subtle effects that aren't visible uh, at first. So for example, if you were to shift to a JavaScript framework rather than a static HTML site, then it could yeah. look very similar. But from a technical yeah. point of view, it would be very different. Which we didn't in, okay. in, in our case. Yeah, so one, one item less to worry about. I mean, not, <laughs> not that JavaScript is bad or problematic. Yeah, course, it's just like these, these kind of changes are pretty big. Yep. Um, I I don't know offhand. I I think if if you have videos on the pages and they're towards the top of the page, then that should be something that we would be able to recognize as kind of like a video landing page, yep. rather than to assume that uh, the the video is an ad. So, so, so just to clarify, because maybe I didn't give enough uh, insights. Uh, so basically, it's a it's a, it's a news site, and it, it, the pages are a news template. So basically, it, it is the standard stuff that you see in all like news media sites, and nothing uh, let's say very different from that. In terms of the video, is like you've seen those videos when you go to some news sites that they are in, on top, not necessarily super relevant to that article, but they they are on the same topic. Like let's say. There is a, an article about Google launching the new Pixel phone, and then we are just talking about the Pixel line, not that specific new phone that was launched. And sometimes on that video, an ad plays. Some other thing that we've been working on is the CLS. So one thing that we've noticed uh, compared to other publishers is that we had these uh, shifts happening in our site because for some images and some ads, the, the space wasn't reserved, and it, it would kind of push the pages down a bit when the ad would load, or like sometimes the ad would be a medium rectangular, and sometimes another format would show. And this wasn't always predictable. We were addressing that. But again, we are not very sure if uh, that could have been the reason for a 40% drop. And that issue has been before the site redesigned. So yeah. again, it's, it's, it's very tricky to uh, pinpoint what the exact reason could have been. I, I don't think the CLS uh, metric itself would be the, the cause, uh, because we don't use Core Web Vitals as a ranking factor yet. So just kind of the, the CLS side itself wouldn't be an issue. It might be that there is some indirect issue that like users are confused, and they start hating your website because of the shift. And then like over time, you see an effect. But that wouldn't be an immediate effect. Yes, and it's, it's, it's a a very light redesign, meaning that some users like it's just small improvements on on making some things clearer yeah. and 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 cleaner in, in in general. So we double checked a lot of things. It's not a tracking issue because you're seeing the same things on Search Console and Ahrefs is reporting. And one interesting thing is that our top three rankings, which we had a lot dropped, they are staying on the first page, but we are just not ranking on the top through rankings. And this has had uh, quite some effect on the traffic that you're getting. Yeah. I, so so I, I don't know your website, so it's really hard to say. But my, my general feeling here is that this is less of a technical issue from the redesign and more a matter of our algorithms just reevaluating the overall site quality. Uh, so that's something where it's. It, especially when you're looking at the the top queries for for a page or for a site, uh, then you you might see that those are still ranking really well because we think your pages are really relevant for those queries. Uh, but if the general shift is is a little bit downwards, then it's almost like well, overall we think your site is a little bit less 
I don't know, for less important from a quality point of view. So it's like overall shifted a little bit down, but the top ones are still very relevant, so we still show those. So from just just from hearing these things, it sounds like it's it's something in that regard. And uh, it's it's really hard for me to say like if if I'd be able to figure out like in more specifically if I had the the site and were able to use my tools, uh, my my feeling is that this is just an an overall shift in how we evaluate the quality of the site. Yeah, may I share the site with you in private on Twitter? Uh, just so you sure. can take a look. Yeah. Perfect. Sure. Or I mean, you can also leave it here in the chat. I, I take, pick up the chat afterwards and look through the URLs that are submitted there. So if you have like like a comment and just drop it in the chat, then I can pick it up here too. I'm I'm happy to take a look, but it, it if it's just like a a general shift in the a way that we understand the quality of your site, then I I don't think I'd even have anything specific to say yep. because. I wouldn't be able to say, oh, on this page, you need to improve this. It's just, well, overall, our algorithms are a little bit more critical with regards to news. And maybe, yeah. like, overall, things could be improved there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the only thing that uh, kind of uh, had, made it, had made this very tricky for us is that it was immediately after the, the light redesign. So it could be a coincidence, but uh, we couldn't base. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I, I'll share that with you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, I, I I think it's always tricky with these things that happen at the same time. But uh, we we make so many changes. It's it's really hard to kind of like avoid some coincidences sometimes. Yep. Yep. Thank you. OK, let me run through some of the submitted questions uh, so that we don't lose track of those. And uh, we'll definitely have more time towards the end to discuss more other topics. Um, follow up to the last Hangouts question on naked URL links without anchor text. So naked URL is essentially just when someone uses the URL as the anchor text instead of a text or word uh, for the anchor text. Um, does it mean that without the anchor text, there is no value uh, in that link? Uh, like this great website is linking to another site with just the URL. Would you pass some of the greatness to the linked site, even though there is no anchor text? Uh, yes, there is absolutely value in, in a link without anchor text. Uh, but uh, of course, we, we just don't have as much context. So you could imagine a situation where uh, even internally within your website, you just use the link itself without an anchor text. And of course, we would be able to crawl your website. Of course, we would be able to figure out which, your, which of these pages are important. Uh, but we'd lose a little bit of value or a little bit of context from that link. So it's a bit like, I don't know, making, making a page with a text file instead of an HTML file where you can format things and specify headings and titles and things like that. So you could do that. But we lose a, a bit of information. Um, I updated my content at the end of last week, and Google only picked up the updated content yesterday. Uh, I've never seen such a delay. Usually, it takes at maximum a few hours to update content. Why does it currently take so long? Uh, will it be back to normal soon? Um, so we, we don't guarantee any specific time with regards to crawling and indexing. And uh, depending on the site and where things change within the site, sometimes we can pick up those changes within a couple of minutes, sometimes hours or days, and sometimes it takes months uh, to pick up those changes. So that's something where, from, from our point of view, it's not that there is a clear like minimum response time for indexing, but rather, depending on, on the pages that you change, sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it's very quick. Uh, for example, if we recognize this is a page that is very critical to your site, where things are changing very frequently, then probably we will pick those changes up fairly quickly. On the other hand, if we realize this is actually a page that has been the same for the last 10 years, and you make a change there, then probably it will take a couple of months for us to realize that actually you changed this page. Uh, so. 
from, from that point of view, there's, there's a wide range there. Uh, what you can do to make it so that we pick up these changes a little bit faster is to let us know about the changes. So you can do that with a sitemap file. That's very common. Um, most CMS systems, if you're using something like WordPress or Blogger or whatever, uh, they will automatically generate sitemap files or feeds for you. And then it's just a matter of you kind of submitting that feed to Search Console. And then once that feed is submitted, then all of the updates automatically go to Google. Uh, so that's kind of the, the fastest way to, to get things automatically get picked up. If there's something really critical on your site that is changing and you really want to make sure Google picks that up as quickly as possible, then you can also use the Inspect URL feature in Search Console and submit the, the change there. Uh, I would really only use this for kind of exceptional pur uh, purposes. So if you're just changing text naturally, if you're adding a few new articles, then there's no need to use any of the kind of submit URL features. Uh, but if there's something really important and urgent that you need to change, then that might be an option. Uh, if we submitted an incomplete sitemap, does it affect the overall search performance of the website? Uh, all web development work is done by another agency, and we already sent recommendations to replace the old sitemap with a new one. Um, so until this is done, will this affect our search campaign at the moment? Uh, probably not. So the, the reason I'm saying probably not is if your sitemap file is missing the pages that you care about, kind of the new and updated pages, then of course we need a little bit longer to actually find all of those new and updated pages. So that's kind of the potential downside. Uh, on the other hand, a sitemap file only helps us to crawl a little bit better. So it's not the case that our crawling would only focus on the sitemap file and we would crawl kind of the, or we would kind of suspend the normal crawling of the website and only focus on the sitemap. Uh, that's not the case. It's really the case that we crawl your website normally anyway, and then the sitemap file helps us to crawl a little bit better. Uh, so if, if you make changes on your website and they're picked up through the normal crawl, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, the sitemap file doesn't change anything with regards to ranking. So uh, if you have an older sitemap file, then that doesn't mean that your pages will rank in any way differently. It's really only about this crawling part uh, where we might want to pick up changes a little bit faster if you make specific changes on your site. And if you have an old sitemap file, then that doesn't get picked up. Uh, one thing I'm kind of worried about here uh, with, with this question is that you're telling the, the agency to use a newer sitemap file, uh, where really what you should be doing with, with a website like this, or in general with a website, is to have your sitemap file generated automatically. So instead of kind of manually replacing the sitemap file, uh, you should make sure that you have a system in place that automatically generates it all the time. Uh, just so that any time you make changes within your website, then those changes get picked up automatically, and there's no kind of manual step involved in, in getting that updated. So that's kind of my recommendation. Uh, one thing you can do, depending on, on your setup, especially if you're at a company where you have different departments working on different parts of your website, and you have kind of a marketing department that does the website, and then maybe a tech part that does something different, um, you can host your sitemap file somewhere else. So in, in your robots.txt file, you can specify a location of your sitemap file. And that can be somewhere else. It could be even on a different domain. Uh, so if you have access to the back end of your server and know when things are changed, then you could put your sitemap file on, on a separate domain just for sitemaps, for example, and use that as, as a way of submitting always live sitemap files, even if the content itself is something that takes longer to be updated. So that might be an option there. Um, how to write a canonical tag and use a sitemap for a multilingual website? Wow, so many sitemap questions. So cool. Um, so the canonical tag, it's, it's not really a tag. It's, uh, it's a link element that you place into the head of the page uh, 
the web page itself. So it's not something that you would put into the sitemap file, but rather it needs to be in the HTML page itself. And uh, that's something that needs to be in a specific format, in a specific part of the, the file, so that we can process that and trust it. Uh, so that's like depending on how you create your web pages, you might need to look into that in particular. Uh, for a multilingual website, you can use the hreflang annotations between different language versions. And these different language versions you can put either into the head of your page, like with the rel canonical, or into a sitemap file. And uh, that's, I guess, a little bit different from the rel canonical in that the hreflang annotations can be in either one. Uh, with regards to the mix of canonical and hreflang, uh, the important part is that all the individual language versions of your pages should be canonical to themselves. Uh, so the canonical tells us which of your pages you prefer to have indexed. And if you say, for example, the English version is my canonical for the French version, then we may say, well, then we don't need to process the French version. We will only index the English version. And usually, that's not what you want. Usually, you'd like to have all of the different language versions indexed individually. So lots of different answers there. I don't know which, which of these might, might help you there with, with your question. It's a little bit vague. Uh, but hopefully, that helps to refine things a little bit. Um, I've been trying to feature my website on Google News. I successfully submitted my website in Google News three to four months back. Is it mandatory to add a news sitemap in order to feature it in that section? Any other recommendations would also be helpful. Um, so I don't know too much about Google News with regards to how, how to get things in, submitted there and into the Google News side of things. So I can't really help you there. Uh, I have heard from other people that things are a little bit backed up with regards to getting new websites into Google News. So maybe that's something where you'll need to be a bit more patient. Um, with regards to the news sitemap, I, I don't know for sure. So I, I do know it's something that we strongly recommend to use a news sitemap, because especially on news sites, it's really critical that we pick up the news content as quickly as possible. Uh, so that's something ki kind of to keep in mind. Uh, but we do have a lot of this documented in the News Publisher Help Center. So I would strongly recommend going there. And I believe there's also a News Publisher Help Forum uh, where you can ask more specific questions on, on these kind of things. But also, li like I mentioned in the beginning there, um, I have heard from people externally that kind of getting new sites into Google News is a lot harder now or it takes a lot longer time. So kind of, yeah, I don't know, just to set expectations. Um, how breadcrumbs help SEO? Does, does a breadcrumb schema show any rich result in search? Should we include the home page as a first position in the breadcrumb schema? Uh, should we add the current page as the last element of the breadcrumb schema? Um, so I, I think you almost answered your first question, um, how breadcrumbs help SEO. In general, breadcrumbs, especially when you're talking about the, the breadcrumb structured data, they don't change anything for SEO. It's not that your pages rank any differently, uh, but rather that we would show them differently in the search results when we understand the breadcrumb markup. Uh, so we could show kind of that breadcrumb trail in the search results as a rich result, it wouldn't change anything from ranking. It just makes it a little bit easier for people to kind of jump in at the place where they would like to be. Uh, with regards to the home page and the current page in the breadcrumb schema, I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but my understanding is that we made it a little bit clear in the documentation that this is optional. So you can include your home page and the final page. Um, you don't necessarily have to. We definitely understand where your home page is. We definitely understand where your final page is. So we can interpolate a little bit from there. Um, the one place where breadcrumbs could have an effect on SEO is less around structured data, but if you use them to actually create links on the page. 
and in a case like that, the effect is essentially that, that you're cross-linking these different pages. So if you have a website that has multiple category levels, for example, uh, then you're linking from one product to maybe the subcategory and to the higher level category in the breadcrumb in the HTML on the page. And oftentimes, that's a good thing. For users, they can navigate and find the category that they want. Uh, for crawling, it definitely helps us as well. So that's something that kind of makes sense. But uh, if you already have this HTML and you're wondering, should I add the structured data or not, then that's really just a display change. And with regards to the display, we also try to figure out what which breadcrumbs to show automatically. So it might be, depending on your website, that we're already figuring out which breadcrumbs to show. Uh, you can see this when you search for your own content. Um, I'm running a local business website. There are a few competitors. Um, my question is, for a long time, my web and some of my competitor websites are working very well against some competitors uh, who made a website on WordPress. But now, suddenly, for the past two to three months, all of the, the webs made on WordPress are on top. And the most frustrating thing is that their entire content is copy and paste. Their page speed, PA, and DA scores are worse. Um, just just a quick side note, PA and DA are not metrics that Google uses. Uh, these, these are from third-party tools, but they can be useful sometimes to compare things. Uh, there's nothing which I'm able to find that they have better than my website, uh, except their backlinks. They have 80% more backlinks than mine. And, and all those three to four webs uh, are made on WordPress and ranking well, and they're only one to two years old. So the question, are backlinks still this much important for web ranking? Um, so I, I think a few things worth, worth mentioning here. On the one hand, uh, the, the age factor is not necessarily something where we'd say, well, older sites deserve to rank higher, or newer sites deserve to rank higher. Sometimes new content is very relevant. We will show that visibly. Sometimes older content is. Uh, sometimes we show a newer domain. Sometimes we show an older domain. So it's definitely not the case that you need an old domain name to rank well. Uh, the other question that I kind of read between the lines is, is WordPress better, or is, is a custom CMS better? Is another CMS better? And from our point of view, we don't care which CMS you use. So it doesn't matter to us if a site is using WordPress. It doesn't matter to us if a site is using Wix or Blogger or any of these other systems. Essentially, we look at the HTML pages that are generated. And all of these systems have worked really hard to make reasonable HTML pages. I think that's one of the, the really cool things uh, about the web in, I don't know, the last 10 or so years in that if you're using any of the common setups to create web pages, then chances are kind of by default things will work reasonably well with regards to search. And you don't need to do anything custom to make them work even better. Uh, so from that point of view, if, if WordPress works for you, and even if you're not creating a blog, but rather maybe a company website or in, or in shop even, uh, then feel free to keep using that. Or if some other system works for you, then that's also totally fine. So from, from that point of view, I think like whether or not a site is on WordPress or not does not play a role. Uh, with regards to links, we, we do use links as, as a factor in some of our algorithms, but we use a lot of other things. And links are probably not the one that I would say is, is the most critical item here. It's really hard to, to say much about this specific case um, because but there is not a lot of detail here. So this is something where I I'd be tempted to say it would be useful to go maybe to the Webmaster Help Forum so that others can take a look to see if there is something specific here. Uh, but the kind of the shift from position three to position one or the other way around is something that can happen for a lot of different reasons. And just because a website has some things that are worse 
doesn't mean that it will automatically rank lower than other ones. So a really common case that, that comes up in, in the forums and when talking with people is, uh, for example, maybe a site has hidden content on it somewhere. And people will come to us and say, oh, this, this website is ranking above mine, but it has hidden content. And your webmaster guidelines say hidden content is bad. Therefore, you should remove that website from search. And from our point of view, we might recognize other things that are good here. And we might even recognize that there's hidden content there. But if we can recognize there's hidden content there, then we can also ignore it. Uh, so just because there's some aspects of a site that are worse than yours doesn't mean that it will always be ranking lower. Maybe there are other things that are actually pretty reasonable. Or what might also be happening is that uh, these sites in the search results are actually kind of very similar or very kind of similar with regards to how they fulfill the user's need. And then it's something where when if we were to take this to, to our search quality team and say, well, like these sites are all very similar, but the one at number three is the one that really wants to be number one, then they'll tell us, well, if they're, if they're so similar, then there's no reason for us to change anything with regards to ranking here. And the way that you kind of work around this is by making sure that your website is by far the most relevant one for these queries. So make it something so that if we were to take this case to the search ranking team, then we could go and say, well, we have a bug in our systems because what we're showing in the top results here is clearly a bad result. And what we're showing at number three or number four is clearly the one that we should be showing here. And in a case like that, then the ranking team will be able to look at that and say, yeah, like we, we need to make some changes uh, to better understand like the unique things that, that are happening here. But if, if all of these are kind of equivalent and they're kind of doing the same thing, then the ranking team will say, well, we could spend a couple of months working on tweaking the ranking for this site. And maybe 50 people will see this improvement, which is OK. Or we could spend a couple of months improving something for a lot of other sites or a big mass of users. And probably they'll focus on the bigger issues. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess, in short, my recommendation would be to maybe go to the Webmaster Help Forums and get some input from other people, uh, kind of more maybe more objective input, and uh, really to think about what you could be doing on your site rather than to focus on what, what your competitors are doing. Um, can fragment identifiers be used to optimize for rich feature snippets? I don't think so. So fragment identifiers are these URLs with, with the hash or the number sign in them. And they're generally generated as links on a page, and they jump to a specific part on that page. So that's kind of the, the traditional thing with regards to fragment identifiers. Uh, and essentially, you're on the same page. You're just going to different parts of that page. And when it comes to indexing, we essentially drop all of those fragments. We ignore them completely. We see them as a link to the same page. And then if it's a link to the same page, there's nothing we need to do there. Uh, and that wouldn't change anything which re with regards to rich features or um, kind of the, the featured snippet aspect there. Uh, sometimes we do pick up the, the fragments with regards to making a a cleaner snippet in the search results. But that's really something where we understand this is a specific part of the page. And we can link to that part, part of the page directly. And we, we will just link to it like that. So you often see this for Wikipedia pages, which use these fragment identifiers quite regularly. Uh, the other place where these fragments are used sometimes is on JavaScript sites. And for us, this is really problematic because like I mentioned, we drop the fragment for indexing. And if the content on the JavaScript site is only loaded when the fragment is included, then it's very likely that we will not be able to index that content. Uh, there's a very, very small number of sites where we do use the fragment identifier for indexing. And that's essentially a very small number uh, of cases where uh, in 
in the early days of JavaScript indexing, we thought this would be the only way to pick that up. And uh, in the meantime, we realized that we shouldn't be doing this because it just causes so much trouble. Uh, so for, for the most part, we dropped those for indexing completely. Um, while Google rejects AdSense applications, uh, just say specifically what went wrong with that app application. That's the best update you can do for sake of your customers. Um, I don't know how AdSense is handled here. And I imagine they get a lot of applications for things that are not relevant uh, to be shown. But I have no idea. Like, you need to maybe add that to the AdSense help form. Um, I have a Hindi word in, a, in my domain, which is a language. Will it affect my articles written in, in, in English? Uh, so we, we do use some, some signals from words in a URL, but it's very, very small. And especially if we can pick up the content on the page, then we can essentially ignore the, the words in the URL. So if you have, I don't know, a Hindi word in your domain name and your content is in English, then that, that feels perfectly fine from, from my point of view. It's, it's very common to also have international websites where you have maybe the domain name in French or in German or in English, and the content itself is in other languages as well. And that's totally fine. Uh, so that's not something I would worry about. Uh, is it recommended to use keywords as it is the content to get the best results on Google? Does the crawler use fundamentals of AI to make combination of keywords that are closely related to the content and then rank them? Uh, we want to know how a crawler picks up keywords to be ranked on Google. Uh, so I don't know. There's lots of, lots of ways that we pick up keywords. but. I, I think, in general, we, we essentially look at the content of the page. Um, way, way in the early days, the, the keywords meta tag was a thing. Uh, but essentially, the content on the page is really what, what users see. So that's where we try to understand which words we would show this query for. And we do try to figure out combinations that are more like synonyms or that are equivalent. Uh, with regards to keywords on a page. Uh, sometimes we figure out which, which things are acronyms or singular and plural. And we try to understand, does this, is this page relevant for both of these versions? Or maybe it's just relevant for one of those versions. Uh, but this is something that, that is quite complex. Um, there was a video that we put out, I think, beginning of this year from uh, the Webmaster Conference we did in Mountain View from Paul Haar. Uh, which was, I, I think, a really interesting session. And he goes into a lot of these uh, aspects with regards to keywords and when we understand things are similar or equivalent, when we understand that things are different. Uh, so he, I, I think some of the examples that he had uh, where like, you have a page that is about New York and a user is searching for York, should that page about New York also be ranking? And of course, we should be understanding that New York are two words, but they belong together. And York is, is a different word, a different location that should be ranking individually. And all of these things are, are really kind of unique problems and interesting to look at. Uh, so I would definitely take a look at that video. I think the only short answer, if you really want something short uh, here, is you don't need to put all of the variations of all of your keywords on your pages. If we understand your page is about a specific topic and has some of those keywords on there, then we can understand the rest itself. So you don't need to put all synonyms on your pages. You don't need to kind of do this SEO thing where you include all of the typo versions of your keywords on the same page. Uh, we, we can figure that. Ooh, OK, wow, we're already at time. Um, maybe I'll just uh, open things up for more questions from some of you. And then I'll pause the recording so that it doesn't get too long. And then maybe we can continue a little bit uh, kind of off the recording afterwards, too. Whew. Hey, John. Hi. Um, I did post a question. Uh, so I we have the. Um, I understand Google mobile indexing is going through AMP um, 
sites first for ranking, um, but we don't. It's an e-commerce website, so not the end. Not the entire website is um, AMP. It's, I I, I want to say about fifty percent of it. So Google is first trying to index AMP. At some point, it's hitting like a regular desktop site link, but the desktop is responsive, hence mobile friendly. So it's now also grabbing all the mobile or the rest of the sites um, from a regular page. I'm linking the AMP pages with the link um, rel AMP HTML and from the HTML doing AMP. So I'm kind of tagging them each other. Um, but this ideally would be duplicate for mobile versus um amp right or no so when, when it comes to the paired amp setup i i think that's what you have there like the normal html and then the amp page and then the the linking between the two uh, right. we would we would use the normal html page for indexing so from from that point of view so like the, the AMP page is more supplemental for us. And we can show that when, when people are on mobile on appropriate devices. Uh, but for indexing, we would use the normal HTML version. OK. And is there a reason why AMP won't get traffic? Like, I see standard devices like iPhone or, I don't know, Android or yeah. something like that. I don't I don't know why why that might happen. So one one thing that has to be the case is this this cross linking has to be correct and the AMP page has to be a valid AMP page. Uh, you can use kind of the the AMP tester for that. Uh, the other thing that sometimes happens is uh, because of the way the AMP pages work, you have to do kind of the analytics there separately especially when we show it mm -hmm. uh, as a page on, on the, the AMP cache, then you can't just use the same Google Analytics setup there. You kind of have to mix those two together. And that's something that's sometimes confusing in that you look at the analytics side, and it seems, oh, nobody's going to my AMP pages. But then you kind of need to add that separate AMP part to it as well. OK. For, for the most part, since AMP is a separate setup from development perspective do you do you suggest user maintaining two versions or potentially three desktop mobile and also amp or just kind of step away from amp i, I see a value for speed and all but uh, i mean what are what are your original thoughts i i don't know so i i think in general from google's point of view amp is a great way to make really fast pages and there's some features in search that rely on amp to to work well especially things where we need to embed kind of a page in an amp viewer type of of situation then we need to have an amp page for that uh, if if your content is not relevant for those search features then it's more a matter of kind of like the speed side can you generate the same kind of speed with your normal HTML pages as you can with the AMP pages? And if so, maybe it makes sense to focus more on the, the regular HTML pages. But if AMP is the way that you can make your mobile site really fast, then I, I would definitely continue using that. OK. All right, thanks. Sure. Hey, John. A follow-up question on the issue. I've shared the domain on the chat, so you can uh, so you know what uh, for what side you're talking about. Uh, just to clarify, uh, you, I think you mentioned earlier on that you don't think that the site was reevaluated because of this. Let's call it uh, design refresh. Uh, could uh, something else that we've been using and that has been used even before the redesign. We've been using uh, something like uh, tracking uh, parameters on the URL, so to all the articles that we link from the homepage, so we know what traffic is being generated from the homepage to which articles, so we know which kind of sections of the homepage are driving the most clicks internally. This is just to, to measure some, some things that we needed. Uh, but this, 
pages themselves, they have the canonical implementation uh, the right way. Could that have had some impact? Because homepage is the most authoritative site, page of the site, and maybe those pages weren't getting as much value, but this has been implemented pre-redesign as well for a couple of yeah. months. That could, I, I don't know, depending on how you have that implemented, that could have an effect in that if from the home page you're linking to the articles with a unique URL, and then from the articles you have the canonical back to a clean URL, so then is, yeah. is that about the setup? And so it's, it's the same URL. It just has URL parameters in the end yeah. of the full URL. Like, it's like UTMs, but we modified them a bit. Yeah. We removed um, that, uh, I, th I think, about two weeks ago. But it's, we, it's not like we're seeing something happening yeah. yet. So, so one thing you, you can do to kind of check that hypothesis is whether those particular kind of the uh, tagged URLs are ranking in, in search. So looking at the performance report to see, is Google focusing on the clean URLs, or is Google focusing on the parameterized URLs? And if Google is focusing on the clean URLs, then we, we can figure the canonical part out, and that's all fine. If Google has been focusing on the parameter URLs, then it seems like, well, we got confused with your site structure, and then over time, we will kind of dilute the value because we're not sure which of these pages we should all actually be seeing yep. associated with your home page, for example. Yeah, we, we check that, and it, it's the clean URLs that are ranking. So okay. the canonical is working the yeah. proper way. So, but we like there are so many things that could have happened. So we're we're testing and trying and thinking about everything. Yeah, yeah. I I I can sympathize with that. It's is like if if there's a big change that happened. Then trying to figure out what exactly is responsible for that is is something that I think anyone would do. I I do think like if you're seeing an overall drop like this from one day to the next, then it seems a lot more like a quality issue rather than a technical issue. If it were a technical issue, then you would usually see kind of a subtle decline over time. Where as we reprocess things for for indexing, then it's like some things go a little bit faster, but it's, it's really something that would take t about, I don't know, a couple of weeks' time to be fully processed. And if you're seeing it from one day to the next, then it seems a lot like our algorithms uh, are kind of classifying your site slightly differently. I see. So yeah, it, this could be the case, because we saw a small decrease on August 30th, then it accelerated dramatically on September 3rd. So by September 3rd, it started really dropping. It hasn't been like a, a couple of weeks in the yeah yeah yeah. I and think, I mean, in, like technical issues would be a little bit easier to figure out and clean up. Uh, so I understand kind of focusing to make sure that all of the technical things are lined up first. Uh, but it, it really feels like from from a quality point of view, it might be worth getting some more input from people and seeing. What could you be doing slightly differently? But I, I really don't know your website, so it, it always feels awkward to say, oh, your, your website's quality is bad. Uh, and it sounds like it's not bad. It's just, well, we thought it was a lot better in the past. Yep. So it's, it's tricky. I hope that you will have a chance to just take a look at the site. And any input that you could give us would be very helpful to kind of work work out what happened. Sure. Uh, I'll take Thank a look. You. OK, let me pause the recording here. Um, for those of you watching the recording, thanks for, for sticking around. And uh, thank you for everyone who submitted questions along the way. Uh, I'll still be here a little bit afterwards if any of you want to, to stay and chat a little bit longer. And uh, otherwise, I wish you all a great weekend. Bye, everyone. <laughs>